Today I'm talking all about the safety and flexibility of gabapentin to treat pain. So next up we have a question from Paint Philly and they ask, is gabapentin as safe and flexible in dogs as it is in people? Because I understand that people can safely take higher dosages. So um, we'll start off with just what gabapentin is. It's an anti-epileptic drug that also has pain killing properties and really it's used to treat chronic pain, so long-standing pain, and especially the pain that's resulting from nerve stimulation, which is something that we call neuropathic pain. Um, it really treats a hypersensitivity to that pain. So what happens with neuropathic pain is that the nerves, they just become, in, they have an increased sensitivity to pain. So things that might have only been slightly painful become very painful. And that's that's called hypersensitivity. But with a, a, a neuropathic pain, we also get something called allodynia. And that is when non-painful things or previously non-painful things start to feel painful. So I kind of liken it to the fact that if the body is feeling pain from one particular area all the time, it really just overinterprets any signal coming from that area. So something that wasn't painful becomes painful and something that was only kind of mildly uncomfortable becomes incredibly painful. Now gabapentin is not so effective when it's used by itself um, and it's much better when used alongside other painkillers and typically with other painkillers we're talking about the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, so your NSAIDs. Uh, and I've got a whole load of information about NSAIDs on the rpetshealth.com website. So if you're interested in those, and the safety of those then definitely check that out on the website. So gabapentin um, can also be used for a, a, a different reasons and the other big reason is um, being used to reduce anxiety um, and reduce fear in specific stressful situations. So the classic ones for those would be vet visits, um, fireworks, going to the groomers uh, and yeah we want to be using it if we're using it for that we want to be using it very intermittently and just using it for those particular events because it tends to lose the anti-anxiety effect if it is if gabapentin is given on a regular or long-term basis so moving then on to the safety of gabapentin so it is a very safe drug we w but as with everything there are uh, there is the risk of side effects um, and typically the the, the most common one that we'll see will be a little bit of sedation and wobbliness. We'll occasionally get vomiting, um, but either way, these side effects are generally very mild and they're generally very short-lived. So it's not something that we typically have many problems with. The big cause for concern or the big thing to be aware of um, more accurately would be that some human preparations of gabapentin contain the sweetener xylitol and xylitol is highly toxic. Um, it can cause death with a very small amount. So although the amount of xylitol present in the human preparations isn't very high, it's definitely something to avoid because we don't want to be risking, um, yeah, kind of severe kidney failure, kind of liver, sorry, severe liver damage um, or death ultimately with, with um, giving our pet xylitol. So that's something to think about there. And then as for the dose range, well, you know, gabapentin, it does actually have a really wide dose range. Some of it's broken down by the liver um, and is then removed from the body kind of exclusively by the kidneys. It's actually eliminated faster in our dogs than it is in humans. So that's something to think about as well. Um, and then the other thing to think about is that we can actually get withdrawal symptoms from gabapentin if we're giving high doses and long-term treatment. And so it's gonna be best if we're then stopping the gabapentin treatment to wean them off. So also given how it's metabolized, you know, theoretical care should be taken if a pet is in severe liver or kidney failure. But, you know, is this a real world, real world concern? I'm not so sure. I think generally it's very, very safe. And then as for overdosing, well, they tolerate overdosing very well. Um, we're just going to get an increased likelihood of side effects, which kind of I've already to uh, already spoken about. So yes, by and large, gabapentin, it's incredibly safe. Um, dogs can tolerate kind of higher doses we don't want to get carried away and it's not going to the, the the more we give isn't going to increase necessarily as pain killing effects after a certain dose rate so we want to keep within the normal dose range and that will obviously be up to your vet to decide but if they you know get a little bit extra it's probably not the end of the world and it's going to be very well tolerated and finally yeah gabapentin it can be a very effective addition to a pain management strategy but it's certainly not the be all and end all and we don't want to be relying on gabapentin as the only form of pain relief for a dog or a cat who is otherwise painful 
You've been watching the Dr. Alex Answers video podcast. Remember to subscribe and head over to DrAlexAnswers.com for any links, downloads, and get your question answered.